Hey everybody, it's Lindsay, and I am here today to share with you how you can create a sunset background with some distress inks. So first of all, I'm starting out with this Aloe Plant Digital Stamp. It's from Digi Stamps for Joy. It's part of their re-release this Sunday. Instead of a new release, Margie, the owner of Digital Stamps, is re-releasing some older images back into the shop and I have to say that this image is just gorgeous. So all I did was I brought it into Photoshop Elements on a four and a quarter by five and a half panel and I blew it up very big as, so it would fill up the entire panel, printed it off with my laser printer, and then I just trimmed it out with my paper trimmer. Now I'm coming in with my Dick Blick alcohol base markers. These are the Blick Studio brush markers and I am just coloring in this image. I'm not great with shadows. Um, it's not something I'm. that's my strong point. So I just basically do the darkest in the middle and fade it out into lighter areas. Put a few shadows here and there where I think they might be, but I'm not being very specific with this. Now I didn't know that aloe plants had flowers on them or could have flowers on them, so don't ever say you don't learn anything from your stamping. So. I looked it up on the internet and they're a reddish orange color so I just colored those in very quickly and then I'm just gonna go ahead and use three greens two of them are the same color I used on the aloe plant itself but the other one is gonna change the tone of those because it's the lighter color and that will just offset the ground around this plant from the actual plant itself so you can see I'm coming in and adding some shading and blending this all out with that lightest marker and that's really going to change the tone of the two greens that I also used in the plant so now I wanted to go ahead and cut everything above the horizon line off this is just going to allow for that sunset background to peek through the back and also I can pop up this plant in front and add some dimension to the card. So I'm just taking some vine, fine detail scissors and I'm doing some fussy cutting. I'm not being perfect here because, you know, it's just a card and also I'll come in with a black marker you'll see in a moment and that's going to cover up any of my imperfections so you don't have to be exactly perfect with this. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so you don't see the entire fussy cutting. It does take a little while but I think it's worth the effort. One thing you do need to make sure of with digital stamps like this or stamps of any kind like this when they have a stem or some really very little pieces that you're cutting around just take your time with these they're gonna get fragile they're gonna get flimsy just take your time and you don't want to end up tearing one off and then your entire image is ruined that you've just spent so much time coloring so just take your time and if you need to reinforce something with your fingers while you're cutting do that just make sure that you don't tear it while you're cutting but you can see I'm almost done here now and I'm just down to the little nitty gritty on these flowers and that did take a little bit of time but again I wasn't completely perfect with this and you'll see in a moment how careless I did get a little bit in portions of it but that's okay my black marker will fix it all so I went ahead and there is that image and you can see how flimsy those flowers get with just their stems holding them up now I'm going to come in with my black soot distress marker. You could use an alcohol based marker. Just know that that is going to bleed a little bit into the paper. So if you have some places that do have a lot of white around them, use your alcohol based marker on those parts. Other parts you might want to use a water based marker like your distress marker. And that's what I'm doing and I'm just going to go ahead and go around this entire image with that and just run that brush tip along the cut edges and this is just going to turn those cut edges black and really give a nice clean look to all of that fussy cutting. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the sunset portion of this card and this is so much fun to do. So first I need to know where to start my sunset so I'm just putting that aloe plant right back onto the card base and this is an A2 white top folding card base that I made myself and I just put two pencil marks where that plant starts where my horizon line is going to start and that will give me a nice starting point for the sunset so I'm just using three colors today of the distressing I'm starting out with some mustard seed I will use spice marmalade for the middle portion and then festive berries on the very top 
Now you can switch this up. I suggest looking up a sunset picture on YouTube and or not on YouTube, excuse me, on Google, and going from there when choosing your colors. I just chose three. You can use fewer, you can use more. It's really up to you how you want this to turn out and look. But basically, this is just Distress Ink Blending. So I started out with that mustard seed on the very bottom, and I put down a first coat. Now I am working on regular plain white cardstock, so it is going to bleed into the papers, so you really wanna start out with a light touch. Once this goes on the paper, you're not gonna be able to move it a whole lot. So if you get smudge marks, they're kinda of there to stay unless you can cover them up a little bit. So I'm moving back and forth between these first two colors, and I've got two of my mini ink blending tools out, and I am just switching back and forth between the colors. Once I'm pretty happy with that mustard seed, I can move on and I can add on this Vesta Berries on the very top of the card. And I'm starting at the top and I'm blending down. You can see I start with a very light hand. On the very far left side, I didn't, I will end up being able to cover that up because it was my first layer, my first mistake. So that's pretty easy to cover up. But I'm going to switch back and forth now between this Festive Berries and the Spice Marmalade. And I'm just going to keep building up that color and blending between the two until I am happy with my results. And I know this looks really bad right now, but you really just have to keep working at it and keep building up that color until it's really very intense. You can see I'm bringing back in some Spice Marmalade now, and I am bringing this pretty far up into that Festive Berries, and that lighter color is really just going to help blend out the darker color as well, and bring some of that darker color into the lighter color. I'll go ahead and put on some more of this Festive Berries at the very top, and if you wanted to, you could always open your card and mask off the top of it, and then you won't get those harsh lines around the edges like I'm getting but I kind of like it that way. It kind of frames the card out. So that's why I just do it this way, but you can always mask off the top of your card. So for my final step here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring back in some mustard seed, and I'm gonna blend again between the mustard seed and the spice marmalade. I wasn't happy with the intensity, and this lighter color is also just gonna help blend out everything all of the colors all at once. So you'll see I do take this mustard seed up into the festive berries as well and really blend out all three colors. And it's kind of like your alcohol markers. Your lighter color is really gonna help blend out everything. So for my card, I just took that aloe plant stamp that I fussy cut out and I put some fun foam on the back of it with some double-sided adhesive. And I just adhered this with some more double-sided adhesive to that card base right at the very bottom. And this just adds a little dimension, a little bit of shadow, and really helps make it look like a real scene. And then for some decoration, I just took my glossy accents and I'm just going to make little dots with this. Um, it's got a fine point on it so you can get some really fine dots. Some will be smaller, some larger, and I'm just going to scatter them across the entire card front. I'm not being too specific, but what these end up looking like are little gems, dew drops almost, on your scene, and it really helps just add some decoration without being overly blingy to the card. And that will finish off the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, I will leave you with just a close-up of this card and a few pictures. and the supply list, you can head to my blog, craftinglawcaffeinated.wordpress.com. The link is in the description box below, as well as that I in the top right-hand corner. That will get you there, too. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and happy crafting.